James, thanks very much for joining us. It'd be good just to get your sense, I suppose, of the outlook for 2022, um, particularly looking at that life sciences side. I think 2022 is, is very much continuing the trends that we saw across 2020 and 2021 in that the sector is, is growing significantly and I, I don't want to put numbers on it but everywhere you look across the life science sector at the moment be that venture capital investment into businesses be that uh, let's say traditional real estate investment it, the sector is growing and growing and growing on all fronts and it's not just in the UK it, it's really a European and, and global um, global context at the moment and and all of that is incredibly exciting. What we have a unique challenge at the moment is there is a lag between the growth of businesses and consequently the volume of real estate that these businesses need. So the, the kind of unique challenge for 2022 in particular is how do you accommodate these growing businesses and keep them in these knowledge focused economies without really kind of stymieing their growth? And this is the kind of unique challenge that we're going to have for the next couple of years is that there is a lot of capital floating about. There is a lot of uh, talent in the market at the moment and companies who are doing really fantastic things, but, but nowhere to go. So how can we provide that temporary, if you like, space to bridge the gap into some of the bigger schemes across the, across the UK in particular are coming on board? And in terms of, uh, I suppose, growth for, for this year and going forward, um, where are you looking at, James? Are you looking at a particular cities or, or what's your sense of that? Yeah, so, so we as a business are uh, drawn towards kind of research intensive universities, let's say. And we're not particularly bothered about what size that is. Uh, and as such, I think this gives us a little bit more bandwidth to look at uh, cities that sit outside of the traditional golden triangle as, as it's described here in the UK the London Cambridge Oxford uh, triangle so we're really excited about cities like Bristol fantastic world-class university that is producing some really exciting new businesses likewise Manchester and, and increasingly across the Scottish market we're seeing really high caliber of spin-out businesses being created by universities and, and equally, the funding provision that goes alongside them now. So, so Cadans as a business, we're, we're really interested on that interplay, if you like, between academic research and the commercial world and what the statistics and stats are behind that university's ability to transfer technology into the commercial market. And that's drawn us to some really interesting universities and really interesting projects that uh, do sit outside the, the traditional hubs in the UK. Um, and there's a big focus, particularly in Glasgow, around that precision medicine side, James. Um, what, what does that mean, I guess, in terms of the, the real estate side? So, so precision medicine is a fascinating part of the market, and we're, we're seeing huge growth uh, across multiple areas, be that kind of data science or traditional wet lab uh, applications of, of precision medicine. And what we see is the, the biggest difference is really that a lot of the real estate provision or the base build, if you like, is, is very similar to a high performing sort of CL2 wet lab type environment. The biggest change that you see is really the volume and intensity of data that these centers produce and as such uh, will need to utilize. So what does that mean from a kind of real estate perspective? It means that there are changes in let's say the resilience of your IT infrastructure it could even mean the application of a small data center on the side and, and associated kind of backup generators and these things so it's something that you need to be very mindful of when you're working in precision medicine and, and really understand the, the businesses that are coming into to any commercial asset because they will have very very stringent demands on the IT infrastructure in your building and as such it could potentially catch landlords out. Really interesting to see how this sector is developing and at such a pace, James, as well. Thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Richard.